streaming live on the Mezzan app. It all starts right now. Here we go one more time from Truist Park in Atlanta. Nats are actually trying to win the last series of the year. The Braves have their big guys in the lineup today. Jackson Rutledge will get a really good test against a team that will have a bunch of time off this week. And we'll see how they do when they don't play until next Saturday. All right, Franny, you got one more year? It's been a nice two years know. with a couple of years with you, yeah, buddy. I really fun. enjoyed it. Well, we, I've had a great time, and I've had a great time being able to talk about this team yeah. with you, right, and the growth. That's a part of it. We've grown up with the, these guys together, and I find it to be, you know, kind of fitting. We're getting to see Jackson Rutledge, the tallest of them all, you know, at 6'8", and getting a final chance against the, the Braves, who he had some success the other day against. He did. That's the second time you face him. So it's just like any time someone goes up against him two times in a row, it's what are you going to show that's different? Or are you going to go with the same stuff and, and hope that it's just as good? Yeah, I love the points you make. Because we're all kind of watching a ball club grow up together as a group. Some of them play together in the minor leagues for a long time, and now you got some of them playing at the highest level for quite a while. And you're just hoping that that growth is about winning, right? Like it's not just about the individual part, but they feel that that winning together, and he's a big part of it. Not because he's tall, but because he <laughs> could be a big arm for them. He is pretty tall. Nats had a great first inning last night off of Spencer Strider who did recover then his offense got him off the hook for that 20th win but the Nats had three runs on four hits there was some running there was some excitement and hopefully they can get that going again early in this one today so let's do this one more time thing as we wrap up the 2023 20, season hey why not take on the best team in baseball on the last day of the season. Visit Annapolis. Enjoy nearby wineries, breweries, and more this fall in Anne Arundel County. Create your fall adventure today at visitannapolis.org. We are visiting Georgia and Atlanta, and evidently the 305 advertised first pitch will be closer to 310 since they just got finished hosing down the infield. National Anthem's been taken care of. They've introduced the entire Braves team on the first baseline. And Franny, let's talk about postseason. A couple of things to be settled, but at least we know which teams are going to be playing in the coming week. Yeah, all 12 teams are decided. There's a couple seating issues going on today with Houston and Texas. If Houston wins, Texas loses. Houston gets the bye. That flip-flops right there. Same thing goes, Texas wins, Houston loses. I believe that the season series has gone to uh, Houston. Is that correct? 
That is correct. That is correct. I want to make sure that I said that correct because if they both win or both lose, Houston becomes that top seed. The part that is going to be crazy is that you look at it's the east is going to go up against each other to get to the west or central, whatever it may be, in both brackets, which is crazy. Marlins Pirates right now are going to be going on at 305. Astros Diamondbacks, Rays and Blue Jays, which is going to be a just a fitting ending, right, for them. Because yeah. they're going to have to face each other, I think it's going to be eight times a possible, ten times in a week and a half, two week span. That's unbelievable. Well, and it was our understanding that on the last day, all games had to start at 3.05 Eastern. Evidently, the Braves have a different agenda, so we'll be ready for first pitch soon. Five million this year. And here at Truist Park, it's been open since 17. We are ready for a, a final day of baseball. 81. Sun's kind of in and out behind the clouds. Humidity, reasonable. And the Braves take the field. Here come the Nats. Abrams, Thomas, Manessas, Ruiz, Keepum, Vargas, and then there's Jacob Young down there in the number nine spot. He's done well against Atlanta. He has four steals in this series, a walk and three hits. Jacob finishing on a high note. Hitting 286 over his last 13 games, and Alex Call will get a start. So will Drew Millis, our young switch hitting catcher, on the last day of the season. Dylan Dodd, first time against the Nets. He's 25, and this is his rookie year, two and two in six starts. Yeah, and you look at the IERA, 20 and third. They're just trying to get through today. I mean, really is what they're trying to do with him. Long hair, you know, it's going to be flowing. So he's got to have what? A change up? Yep, he's got a change up. Pitch arsenal stack has powered by Google Cloud for Dylan Dodd. Four seam fastball slider change of cutter. Cutter is just like it, it's a pitch that he has started to throw more a little bit in the minor leagues than he has shown here in the big leagues with 1.4%. High slugging percentages because you see where that ball is. It is located more middle of the zone. That is where you've got to hunt. Don't go chasing off the sides and the corners. Make him come to you. And the Atlanta Braves defense behind Dylan Dodd today. Eddie Rosario in left, Michael Harris in second in center, and Ronald Cunha Jr. in right field. Riley and Arcia on the left side, Ozzy Albies. Matt Olson on the right with Travis Darno getting the call behind the plate today. Davey Martinez. So glad for Davey that he's got an extension on his contract. Mike Rizzo has been extended. And so commitments have been made by ownership on that side. Hope you enjoyed Mark Lerner's visit with Dan during that extra pregame. Look into the future. And I think some of us feel that a good future is closer than we might have felt right. just a couple of months ago. There's a lot more pieces to it, right, that they have to get. But this is a great start. This is a great start. C.J. Abrams, couple of hits in the series. Braves have pitched C.J. well. He's two for ten. Lane Thomas one for ten. 
Joey Manessis two for ten. Some hits from these guys would really get things going. And how about that on the first pitch of the game? All right, let's Asking you shall receive. On time, CJ on the swing, and the ball game a minute late at 311. We'll get that four seam fastball outside corner and let's drill it up the middle. Nice job by CJ to start this thing off. And let's set that record for him. And you're talking about the Nats single season steals record. He's at 45. Boys are up there hacking. Olsen over to have a look. You look at what you know today is for a lot of guys it's important still for for some right I mean you don't want to make this about individual records or anything but that hundred run mark for Lane mm -hmm. the possibility of 30 homers is huge that seeing the lefty for the first time Lane hasn't had a high average in September but he has still done some damage and he remains in the top 10 in doubles and in total bases. Best year of his career. And we can see and I know Lane can see it because we've talked to him about it. He can see where he can take another leap forward after this year as well. One one on the move is Abrams off speed pitch and there it is with number forty six. Got ourselves a tie. Well, great pitch to run on too with the little slider on the outside part and Travis Darno, a really good exchange on this. Then the elite hand placement by him. Now, if he takes and steals this base within, can he lift it up too? <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, Albies. How's he Albies going to stick close to that bag to keep CJ honest? Because Arcia is really playing to pull. It's two one to Lane Thomas. So CJ Abrams now 92 percent efficiency this year 46 for 50 as he ties Trey Turner from six years ago which is incredible. The number of steals unbelievable but the percentage. It's absolutely insane. Well how about this. Got a number for you in a second. Lane Thomas base hit by the shortstop. Abrams was backing up. He goes to third and Lane Thomas like CJ leading off this game with a knock. Nice. CJ Abrams Franny you know how many steals he had at the All-Star break. Fourteen. Fourteen I was about to say it was less than twenty. Fourteen in sixteen attempts when the Nets played at St. Louis on July 14th and since becoming the leadoff guy during that time he has stolen more bases than Ronald Acuna Junior during that time. Big spot for Joey problem. Manessis, first and third, nobody out. Joey does have an RBI. That was on his base hit to right. They, I mean, they give him the entire right side of the infield. There's an RBI waiting over there, even if he doesn't get a hit. Yeah. I mean, there has been a struggle against lefties, though. We know that. When it comes to this spot, but not here. Well hit to left. Off the wall. Abrams scores. Now Lane Thomas with a 90 feet of 100 runs scored as Manessis puts the Nats on top. Hello, everybody, for the last game of the year. Well, nice job by Joey. Get on top of a little cutter that backs up on Dylan Dodd. 107 off the bat. I think Joey might have thought he got this one. Yeah, Rosario gave up on it quickly, knew he couldn't catch it, hoping for a carom. And now a big spot for Cape Barrett Ruiz, who's 281 right handed. 50th extra base hit right there for Joey. Yeah, awesome. And oh, yeah. For Joey Manessis, hit number 61 with a runner in scoring position. He is so clutch. And that's 89 on the RBI count.
three behind the great 06 season that was Ryan's first full season in the big leagues and more than Rendon twice and Mr. Clutchy and Desmond. It's an insane list to be on. Well struck by K. Barrett out of play. He's had a good series. A homer, two RBIs, four for ten. And Ruiz has hit safely eight of his last nine ball games with 13 hits. I think even better than that is the fact that he was 341 with a 947 OPS against the Atlanta Braves this season. Hmm. By far the best numbers. And right now Dodd unable to throw the ball by anybody so far. He's pitched six to 15 plus innings now and he's given up 22 hits 11 runs including what's happened here. Outfield slightly the other way. I mean he fouls all pitches that look like they're going to hit his body when he starts the swing that was squaring him up. That was squared him up. But that's the stuff like you hope at some point it just starts to become a norm for him to take to see. In on his hands and he keeps his hands inside it and that will bounce over the left field wall and bring in two runs do it Lane Lane Thomas scores his 100th run sealing that deal early and K Barrett jumps his RBI total up to 66. Now what an A.B. right here for Kaber Ruiz ball off the plate in with that little cutter. Like if it's there go chase it you can go get it but not the ones that are right at you but just the fact that he's able to keep that fair. The amount of times that you see guys hook that one into the third deck here right or just into the into the third base dugout. Unbelievable right there by Kaber Ruiz. Well done Lane Thomas. Fifth highest ever in the organization. I mean that's incredible. Since 95 and that includes the great Guerrero of the Expos. Awesome. Four guys to do it. And I would say this might be the offense that would be the most surprising for it to come from. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I mean, think I'm, that's it's, fair. Not, it's not a it's not a knock. It's just that that is. Key boom and with the ball in front of the runner Ruiz stays on the run Arcia and finally Dot gets it out and some cheers for that. One pitch to Carter Key boom. I say that because for me guys score 100 runs on on good teams. Right. They, they do it on teams that have a ton of power. The fact that Lane Thomas has done it this year. Number one Jamer. Joey. Caber have been a huge part of that and driving him in. And doing such a good job of him getting on there and doing damage. I mean it's a it's a collective effort when it comes to that. Viva Las Vargas was just played on the organ as Ildemaro steps in. Pinch hit one for one in the series. And he does something that's so hard to do as a part time player. He's hit safely 12 of his last 16 games. But the batting average over that time is 313. He's going to finish the year right around 250. Over 280 right handed like K. Barrett better splits from this side. And that ball's well hit out to right center. Harris and Acuna. Who's going to take it? Harris peeled off. Ronald Acuna Jr. had to make a backhand grab on that. Usually the center fielder takes charge. And on the second out, K. Barrett over to third. I think Michael Harris, the second, gave up on it, thinking if you want to throw him out, you have the best chance of this one. Even though both got great arms. That looked like a team that is we have the postseason on Friday. We're coming up this weekend. I don't want to get hurt.
Here's Alex Call who gets a start today. Alex playing in his 128th ball game. He's had 372 at bats this year. Leads the Nats and walks at 52. Down and in. No, one thing that won't go to unnoticed this year from Alex Call is the big big hits that he got and the great defense he played in center field for yep. a considerable amount of time. De defensive runs saved, outs above average. And the walk off against the Cubs in that one hour and 50 minute game. How about that? That was crazy at home. I got to ask the question today how many games on the docket today are going to end under 215? Guys tend to be swinging on the last day of the season. I'm still waiting for the big leagues for a team to do the whole what we would do in the minor leagues end of the year one bat both teams see who can do it leave it at the plate. <laughs> did you really. Yep. How long did what's the longest you went without one getting broken. Uh, three innings three half inning and a half. That's amazing. And the guy who broke it Eric Kratz broke his own bat. We used his bat. And he did it again later on broke his own bat. Two two to call. Chopper third base line. Riley can't make the play and it's four for the Nats. Alex call collects RBI number thirty eight. And I think this. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of comical because like. We've been asking for this with two strikes from him. Too many fly ball outs. From Alex call all year. Right and this ball is not skull this ball's hit 60 miles an hour. It's put in play on the ground. He has good wheels and he just used them for a knock. Eighth net to bat Drew Millis. One for seven right handed. But off to a great start in his big league career eight for twenty six. He has a ton of family and friends from Illinois and Missouri down here this weekend. Grandma's here. One one. He said safely in six of his seven starts. Yeah, there's the Millis family. <laughs> there they are. Let's go. Fun group. Now we're seeing that cutter a lot more today. Just in general. That, that's something that he had gone down to the minor leagues and worked on quite a bit. You know the one thing I appreciate about it today though without the 40 man expanded rosters. You're not going to have like the crazy like line change of you know there's going to be moves but not yeah. like. The wholesale changes where all nine guys are going to get flipped out. Well I remember about five or six years ago Rob Manfred joined us. During one of our spring training games and we asked him about that he said it's coming. It took a while. But uh, that's one of the best things that have happened under his tenure. At least for the way the game is played. One ball two strikes to Millis. He'll yeah. take it up and away and you know I know the integrity of the game was was damaged. I feel like damaged because you're you know teams that are in it are playing teams that are out of it that are. Loading up the 40 man roster. We had 13 and 14 man bullpens. Yeah. It was crazy. 10 extra guys on the bench. Tony D. Francesco when he was the interim manager in in uh, Houston. Triple barrel. He had one guy waiting but he was throwing on the side they would rotate him in. Le guy would come in for a lefty, take him out, put the righty in, but they had yeah. it, it continuously got, went on all four games in Houston in September, over four hours. Crazy. It was like a football team making it to a bowl game or to a playoff, and then you play a spring football game. Yeah. It just didn't make sense with all the personnel. Can't play a different game in September than you've played all year. 2 2. Millis started the bat, stopped it. I guess they appealed. No swing. This will give Alex Call, who has good speed, a head start at first base, and Olsen will play just behind him. It's going to be at least a 30 pitch first inning for Dylan Dodd. More and more. Brave season series, lead the Nats 8 to 4.
three out of five here. So this would be at least an eight pitch a B. Good swings though he's getting getting the pitches to go for. Two singles a steal two doubles an infield hit. It's been a fun first inning. Mm. Almost to the same seat in the same row. It was about five seats toward home plate from the previous where, foul ball. Where was that Seattle or was it Anaheim this year. Or he had, back, yeah the back to back. Pe yeah pep peppering the uh, it was this mezzanine to the same right person dropped the first one. Got the second one at least. We've seen some things this year. Drew Millis draws the walk. And now Jacob Young will be the ninth net to bat in the first. I've been look, I've been impressed by Drew Millis this entire time. Right? Riley Adams put on an absolute display this year for a backup catcher, not getting a lot of ABs. And it really other than the pop there's not been a drop off when he's gotten in there. Yep. Jacob Young a good series three for seven a walk four steals. Breaking ball he rides it to right it'll back up Acuna and he'll make that grab but even two of the outs were very well hit by the Nats and they drop a four spot in the top of the first. Lead the world in everything offensively. Ozzy Albies, the number two guy in this series, four hits, 109 runs batted in, 33 home runs. And if you pitch him inside in the late summer, you're in trouble. These guys are really good. 938 runs, 305 home runs. Jackson Rutledge making his fourth start, second consecutive against the Braves. He has a 6 ERA. That's fine. That's that, whatever. My whole thing is what we got to see last week in his last outing was amazing against them especially the way he ended it against Ronald Acuna Junior with the fastball up in the zone for a strikeout. Ronald went one for three against Jackson in that game. Second in the league at 338 on base percentage is first at 417. Allowing him to wreak all the havoc with the 41 steal, or rather the uh, no way it's 41. The 41 homers is 73 steals. Unbelievable combination of power and speed. Swing and a miss on a big Rutledge breaking ball. Jackson ninth strikeout in just over 15 innings. Good slider. Again from Jackson Rutledge. 
Love the competitive pitch right there down the zone corner plate. You have a team that you got to think is going to be hacking and trying to get that record home run record. And so therefore quality strikes will beat that. As the LBs with a walk over for one against Rutledge last week. That's really play him to pull. And in the outfield as well. Except for Alex Call who straight away left. But Young's toward the gap a bit. Fastball away. As he walks his share of times, 44 in the air. 107 strikeouts. Low four pitch walk in front of Riley and Olsen. Ouch. Look at that pitch arsenal for Jackson Rutledge. This season with the four seam fastball slider, sinker, changeup, and curveball. Four seam fastball sinker about 59%, 60% of the time. Slider 22%. Changeup, which Drew Millis loves. He likes his changeup. He just needs to finish down with it. Riley not in the lineup for his start last week. Austin with an RBI and a walk, two for ten in this series. He'd have to have one of the days of his life to make it to 40 and 100. He's sitting at 37 and 97 on the power numbers. Four of the top seven home run hitters in the league wear this Atlanta uniform. This one hard out to the gap. Cut off on a good play by Alex Call. Throw comes into short, and then the relay is late. And Austin Riley has his 72nd extra base hit. Yeah, nice job by Alex Call to cut this off. Throw it to second. No reason to throw home on this one. And the reason why I say that is because that ball is absolutely hammered. It got to him quick. He got to it quick. You keep him there. You throw it to second. You keep him there at first base, most likely. Well, here's Matt Olson. Ozzy Albies could talk in a normal voice coming down the third baseline and Drew Millis would be able to hear him by the time the pitch is delivered he's coming 40 50 feet down that line with key boom way out towards short and Jackson's getting himself in trouble falling behind here he got ahead of Acuna Up in the zone for a strike. The nice thing you know as a uh, runner at third in this situation is that also is really not going to hit the ball at you. So you can get closer to him. He wouldn't do that if Austin Riley was up. Not a righty, no. <laughs> no, sir. Or, or yeah, I mean, Zuna maybe. Right. I mean, just for the fact that Carter Keeboom wouldn't be playing off the line, but it's right. just the whole. You could do it. It's nice to know when a guy is not going to rifle one right, right at you. Yeah, Ron Washington over there in his ear. 2 2 now. And that's through to right field. Riley following Albies. Lane Thomas, strong throw, but late. And the Braves so quickly have cut the Nats lead in half. That gets Olsen to 139 runs batted in. And it's just the ball and for Joey one of them Joey he just goes right to first base splits the gap in between them and what a, I mean you got to think about Austin Riley working out there at second base because he made that easy there's Ozuna with Olsen at first one out it's mentioned he's a fly ball hitter who just appears to try to hit homers every time he's up there 
And to get him to hit a ground ball is not easy and that ball hit him. Four straight runners now after the Acuna strikeout. So they're now one run away from tying the all time first inning runs mark 146 on the season. Wow. The Nats are going to finish in sixth this year. 100 first inning runs. That's pretty which impressive. is incredible. Yeah. I think I read that the, the Astros uh, are at 110 now because they scored four 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 first inning runs today. The 2000 Cardinals had that mark and that was without the DH. That guy has scored 149 of them. Vic Carapazza the crew chief has the plate today. He's out to break up this meeting. Nick Marley Dan Merzell Ryan Wills at first second and third. Isn't that deep behind Jackson Rutledge today with Alex Collin left Jacob Young in center with Lane Thomas in right. Key boom Abrams left side Vargas and Manessis on the right with Drew Millis getting the duty behind the plate. Michael Harris the second. Rutledge got him out a couple of times last week. He's been hit by a pitch in the series two for three. Missing up a lot. This guy wants to swing the bat. It's only walked 25 times this year. It's been great against the Nets, like most of the Braves, who've won six consecutive NL East titles now. How about the Rays going up 8 0 already? Jonathan Aranda, Grand Slam. He's got five RBI in two innings. You know what? And I don't think anybody wants to play them in October. Yeah. A Rose Arena comes to mind, who somehow yeah. turns his game up every right. year, it seems. And it's just going to be interesting to see how they do things with their pitching staff, based on the fact that they've had so many injuries. They have. Two balls, two strikes. Nets will need a one hopper at somebody to turn two on this guy. Instead, it's a pop up right over by the mound. Keyboom came in to call off his pitcher. Two down. Nice job right there by Jackson. Get back in there. Find Doug away, soft contact, jam him. Doug Fister would have waved off his infielder there. You know, we wouldn't have even gone after him. <laughs> Isn't it funny the things you remember about guys who haven't? Played for the Nats in many years. Yeah, it's every time I see a foul ball that a pitcher might be looking at, I'm thinking, that's Doug Fister's ball. And when Mackenzie Gore did it in New York this year, we yeah. loved it. There's Travis Darno, the catcher, and that's in there. He played Friday night, walked, hit by a pitch, two for three. They've been going every other day with him and Sean Murphy, both right handed hitting catchers. Healthy hack. So they have 33 home runs between their catchers. And 100. Five RBIs. Mm -hmm. That's on the corner. Jackson Rutledge was really in trouble. Two runs in, two men aboard. He gets Harrison Darno and a very eventful first inning.
Sustained start off great for the Nats. Lead off single by C.J. Abrams, and then he ties. Single season Nationals record with stolen base number 46. Joey Manessas with a double for extra base hit number 50. And then Caper Ruiz with this double knocks in Lane Thomas, who records run number 100 for the season. An awesome, awesome mark. Yeah, it's one we don't talk about enough because at the top of the lineup, Franny, whether it's your leadoff guy or your number two guy, it's such an important stat. That means they're getting on base. The RBI guys behind them are doing their jobs. And I look forward to CJ very soon being a 100 run guy. He's at 82 on the year. They're going to start doing a little bit of this. Here comes the uh, Acuna coming off to an ovation like they did with Spencer Strider last night. This one is really well deserved. This one is uh, giving your most likely what should be the NL MVP his due. EY Jr. giving him a hug, giving him his love. I have a feeling he knows a thing or two about him just from, through his dad. All the way back in 2010, playing in for Anaheim, we're in Texas last day of the year for that team that ended up losing in the World Series, the Giants. Ron Washington was the manager, and that's what they did, right? Each guy individually came off, and that yeah. was a record breaking team for them, who had Josh Hamilton, the AL MVP. Cool, very cool. First pitch, second inning, CJ Abrams taking one after taking the first pitch of the ballgame right up into center field and then stealing a bag and being driven in by Joey Manessis. Ball picked on a hop by Olsen, who's an amazing first baseman. He's trying to keep CJ away from that record. It's like they work on every day with Ron Washington. Yep. Staying through it, rake through it, staying down on it for a big man. Lane Thomas next clean single to left center first time and uh, kudos to Nick Marley there the first base umpire he gave the fair sign first and then he gave the safe sign and that's what indicates the ball hit the ground so the fans knew what was going on not a clean line drive catch and that's a good job by him. Oh and two. Lane by the way adds another click onto his total base total which is in the top 10. Just love to see him have a really nice day to finish it off. Sees the off speed. One and two. I just like the fact that he gets to see a lefty today. <laughs> he likes lefties. And ended on a lefty. Over a 940 OPS now against left handers. Pat Rossler told me the other day that Lane Thomas has the perfect mentality to be a major league hitter. One and two. And that ball is well hit. Out to deep center. Harris back. And that'll hit the bottom of the wall. And Lane Thomas adds two more onto his total base total. What a day so far. But Pat told me, Franny, that Lane doesn't let anything bother him. In fact, sometimes after a strikeout or whatever, he'll come back to Pat in the dugout and say, boy, that was a you know what at bat. Yeah. And uh, then he moves on to the next one. He doesn't let it fester and affect his performance. Well, it festered right there. He should have hit that ball out. <laughs> he's Some two ball. away from yeah. he's two away from 30. Some ballparks that might have gone out. Really deep out there in this yard. That's Lane's 36 double of the year. Came into the day with Joey Manessas tied for ninth in the league. So they have both doubled up here. And Joey out ahead of that one. This is soft contact out to left. Rosario under it. Indication of how strong Joey is. That ball carried almost 300 feet. And he was way out in front. Two outs and it's up to Kay Bear Ruiz. 
But Franny, you can speak to this because I guess it's a little easier when you're playing every day. You know you're going to get your four APs. You've got to toss those out and look forward to your next one. How tough is that for a guy who is a part-time player and maybe gets it's 10 at bats a week? That's why Il Demaro is so perfect for his job because he's able to forget about it. It's one of the toughest things based on the fact that that is all you live off of. Right when we we're pinch hitting a lot more that one at bat would linger forever because that's your mm. shot. Yeah. Even though those situations are not meant for like just total success for you as a pinch hitter. Sure. Gabert's having a nice weekend five for eleven four batting in against the Braves. Gotten a couple of fastballs and after taking one he was on that one. O2 almost on it. Off speed Ruiz able to stay with it. And sometimes for young men who play this game the die is cast early. I just got a message from a baseball crazy member of the Thomas family. Who says when Lane was a kid he would strike out. He would come back to the dugout and the first thing he would do is start cheering on his teammates. That's Lane. That's our laner. That is Lane. O2. Great take. Nats with six base hits already and three of them have been doubles. K. Bear Ruiz base hit left center. Lane Thomas is going to score number 101 and K. Bear Ruiz having a big day and a big weekend. RBI number 67. And he was starting to get a little froggy there in that back. He's just starting to get like a little bit of a bat tip and just bouncing off his shoulder. More and more confident. It just been an absolute nightmare for these brace pitchers. 46 for 125. Now, runner in scoring position for Kaber. Kurt Keboom was up there hacking first time up. Hit a firm ground ball to short. Two hopper top spin to Riley short way the 5 4 puts an end to the top of the second but. Thomas a one out double Ruiz two out RBI single.
years ago. Juan Soto. Hater the pitcher. Grisham the right fielder. Oops. The ball changed directions on him. Juan Soto cleared the bases. The ballpark went absolutely insane. And the Nats would take that first step by beating Milwaukee. Love Gerardo Parra and his demonstrative leadership on that ball club. Drinks were flying out in the outfield, literally. And the Nats were on their way. And Davey led them to the five game stunner over the Dodgers, the four game sweep of St. Louis, and the seven game series win over Houston. All three of those teams heavily favored against our Nets. Eddie Rosario three for nine in RBI this weekend one for two against Rutledge last week had him out ahead and Lane Thomas just cruising to his left three in a row now after the hit batter 2024 spring training season tickets are on sale now discover the ballpark of the Palm Beaches the second home of your Washington Nationals view the full schedule at Nats.com slash spring. Uh, to the bottom of the order for Orlando Arcia. And out to short. Abrams on the charge. Knew he had time. Joey shifts to his right. And on one pitch, the second out. And Orlando Arcia is over his last 15. Yeah. Good pitch right there by Jackson. Sinker running in even farther. Jammed. Yeah, there was no exit velocity on that. Well, there was. It just <laughs> was not high. <laughs> Very low. Here's Kevin Pilar gets his first AB after replacing Acuna. Oh. And you know, like Friday night, we're like, oh, good, Acuna's out of the game after two at bats. Then Pilar goes two for four and drives in a run. Line drive caught by Keyboom. Second inning over. And after 26 in the first inning, what a great frame that is for Jackson Rutledge. DraftKings do ups. Vargas call Millis. We'll look at each player's odds to get on base when we come back. DraftKings Sportsbook makes it easy to bet. Download the app. Get your bets in now. Odds for this top of the third. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. New customers can bet five bucks and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Use promo code Diamond when you sign up. Ildemar Vargas hit the ball pretty well out to right center first time. Acuna caught it. Calls got a base hit. Melissa Walk. Now they have replaced Olsen at first with Nicky Lopez. Huh. 
They want to give him the standing O. Maybe, here at home? you know, knowing Matt Olson, he might have said, I'm not the walk off kind of guy like that. Look at that swing by Ildemaro Vargas. And the Nats keep doubling up on Atlanta here early in the game. I like it on the down and away pitch right here. Nice job. Get extended. Take advantage of this opportunity yet again by Ildemaro Vargas. And that whole thing with Olsen just a guess on my part. But I, I could see him saying that. I don't make a big deal out of me coming out of the game. He's that kind of guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But even if you're the guy that gets, you know, like Acuna, I have no problem with it. You've earned it. Yeah. This is the last day. This is for the, like, this is usually the fan appreciation day. Well, our fans appreciate the way the Nats are swinging these bats. Alex Call infield hit first time for his 38th RBI. That was a big deal for Alex and we'd love to connect uh, collect another knock today. No hitter wants his batting average for the season to end the season to start with the number one. So he got back over 200 with that hit. Alex call out ahead of this one and Rosario playing so far out toward the gap. Only the hang time of that ball allowed him to get there. Drew Millis will be next. Yeah, those are the ones that you just hope at some point they become the line drives down that left field line. Yep. Drew a walk first time, literally. His third walk, he struck out five times in 31 Major League Plate appearances. First pitch, and that's out to center. Harris retreating. Vargas tagging. It's a strong throw, but just too far away. Made it interesting, though, didn't he? The only one I remember from him is the one last year, Cesar Hernandez was the runner. He was going to the left center field gap. Across his body, he threw about a home plate. I think it was Cesar. And it was one where you, all of us kind of just sat there like, what did we just witness there? <laughs> it's, it's, it'd be fun to have. Him and Lane, Ronald Acuna Jr., three of the best arms in the league here on this field. And Young trying to surprise the Braves with a two out bunt RBI hit. Jacob a fly ball to right first time. Love watching his speed game in this series. Four bags, and he's 12 for 12 as a big leaguer. Joe Simpson, their longtime broadcaster here, he's talking about one of the faster guys he's seen in this, in the league. Another one out to right, and it's Pilar this time. This ball got some carry on it. That thing is halfway onto the track, about 365 feet away. Lead off double for the Nat Strand, their fourth runner.
completely free. Get updates this offseason, great deals on tickets for the 2024 season and more. Visit nasa.com slash fan club for more information. Bottom of the third. Two, three, four for the Braves. But this time it's all Bees, Riley and Lopez. Jackson Rutledge coming off a six pitch. One, two, three, second inning. The value of getting ahead. That breaky ball misses down and into Albies, who walked first time. One, one. Sorry, Bob. You all right over there? Yeah, I'm good now. I, uh, I didn't know if you were going to remain in the booth or not or make a mess during that promo. Yeah. Kept well, you cool. Well done. Thanks. To watch you develop as a broadcaster over the last two years has been truly uh, interesting. Special? On my part. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Special. You've been awesome, buddy. I appreciate you leading the way. 2 1. Now you got two grandkids in there. You have to teach them everything. You got a third here and having to teach me the ropes here. <laughs> 3 1. That's in there. Kudos to Dan. Great work all year. Pre game, post game, interviews, features, play by play. Just being Dan. It's good enough for us. Last game of the season for those of us who live this life every day it's just such a strange day to know that there's no game tomorrow right that's way inside Ozzy thought he was going to get hit instead he will be walked for the second time yeah, I think it's that part where you have you know with no playoff aspirations going and there was a long period of time where every year was a playoff aspiration you're going yeah. season was ending you but the next season was starting right then. But I uh, you know I work on the score book about a half hour every morning before we ever get to the ballpark and I flipped the page today and dawned to me there's nothing to write in for tomorrow. What'd you do. I went and Did you scribble. I went and had the thirty five dollar buffet. <laughs> at, the, at the hotel smart. Yeah I made up for it. Drowning my sorrows. In the breakfast buffet. 2 0. It was great. But now Jackson Rutledge falling behind, guys. It's, I mean, it's so simple with him. He's so good when he gets ahead. Yep. And these are the guys that gave him trouble two innings ago. Check swing. No swing and not a called strike, so it's 3 0. Was it? Yeah, could have been called I either way. Is. Ball sl split the ceiling up there. And I was thinking 3 0, Riley could be pumping here. This guy with 37 home runs. You don't necessarily want to see your guy with a check swing on a 3 0. Well, it's foul ball. You're okay with that. Towering fly ball to center. Jacob Young actually come coming in to get it. He's in the shadow of that big light standard out there. And he's got it for the first out. So Rutledge battles back from being behind. Let's compare. 22 to 23 plus 15 on the wins. A half run a game on the runs. 15 more homers. A nice power pack weekend. ERA the same. That five has got to come down. And really cutting down on the years and turning, I might add, many, many more double plays. Yeah, no, I, I think the defense, everyone could, everyone could say it. It was a heck of a lot better than last year. Not, not even but comparable. But still really. not where they, you know, the the standard is going to be set as far as, you know, winning playoff baseball. But that's a huge jump. That's what you wanted to see. And you can look at C.J. Abrams and say, well, the kid had 22 errors. 
As so Franny has Jeter. noted, a lot of those were throwing errors. Yep. And then, Franny, the throwing errors, that comes down to making the right decisions. More, I would say seven of the 12 were decisions, right, that he probably yeah. could have held on to. And as he gets more. And that's experience. Yeah. As he learns his position and his craft over there, he'll make better decisions. And we firmly believe because of his athletic ability, his high baseball IQ, this guy will be challenging for a gold glove. Not next year probably, but two years from now and beyond, who knows? Yeah, it's very reasonable. to him. Yep. So I've had many baseball people tell me over the years, and Ron Washington, their third base coach, subscribes to this. You can make yourself as good of a defensive player as you want to be mm -hmm. if you put in the work. Some guys more gifted than others. This young man is very gifted. Yep. There's Wash. I mean, almost every day during batting practice, he's on the track over by the dugout, tossing little hopping ground balls or batting balls to some of his infielders. Every day. And you see the veterans out there with him, not the kids. Just. Well, that's the yeah. that's culture that you set. That's a culture. That's part of culture. You don't have you don't go into the clubhouse to get guys to come out. They're coming out on their own. Yes, sir. During their times, he's waiting for you. Not, not everything has to be set, but I'll be there for you. Whenever you're there, I'm there. Good battle for Nicky Lopez here. Nicky this weekend, one for five, and he faced Rutledge last year, uh, week. Had a base hit in two ABs. Double play guy if he hits it right at somebody hard. But he's going to get hit. That's a walk and a hit batter in this inning. And now Jackson Rutledge has given the Braves four free base runners. It's the Yank curveball. I mean, not even close. That was kind of the miss that we saw a lot of from Jackson in his debut. Yeah. And that usually means overthrowing, right? You're trying to throw the greatest, greatest curveball of your career. So two on one out, Ozuna, dangerous, is next. <laughs> and while we have a minute, don't want to wait till the ninth inning for all of this. Our producer, Chip Winfield, the best I've ever worked with over an 18 year period with the Nats. 100% the best I've ever worked Unbelievable, with. Unbelievable, his uh, knowledge of the game. Our brilliant director, Chuck Whitlock, alongside. Everybody back in the control room in D.C. right now in the truck when we're home. It's an honor and a pleasure to work with all of you, men and women. Our job's a lot easier because of you. And shout out to Joe Delpo. Joe, our stage manager. Love the guy. Always keeping me on time. Joe Del Poe's the world's strongest man, and Kevin Franzen is the second strongest I've ever been around. I think he could take you. Oh, with those bear <laughs> claws? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no balls, one strike. We love our crew. 1-1. One, one. And what goes unnoticed is what really not talked about enough is just they're there well before way, all of us. Way before we're here. One ball, one strike. We do the fun stuff. They do all the hard work. And so, yep. And they're all doing pre and post game yep. stuff too. Well, same here, you know. It's well, you, yeah, you're, <laughs> mi you're Mister Pre Post with Dan. You know, but a couple of years ago, things were rough on some of our crews. The pandemic yep. hit. A lot of them who depend on work and the day-to-day -day thing of baseball. Those were not great times. We're glad things have rebounded and they get to work every day. Ozuna to center. He's done it again to the Nats. Wow. I mean, that's way up there. That gets him to 39 homers and 99 batted in. I mean, he just looked like he swatted at that. I didn't think he got it right away. And then it just kept going. 432 feet. That gives the Braves to number 306. 
Up and in fastball and just he backspins it. I mean, he knew it right away. You just can't give these guys free base runners because one of the big guys is going to do just that. Harris next one out here in the third and. Braves have tied this thing up. Key boom for the umpteenth time over there looking at a foul ball. And it just gets over the screen. I'm going to go out on a limb, Bob, and say that Ozuna and Riley probably won't come out of the game. I just can't believe how strong these guys are and how yeah. they go to the deepest part of the ballpark and then go 30 to 40 feet beyond. 0 2 to Harris now. Jackson Rutledge has given up his fourth home run in 18 innings of Major League work. And I think if there was one glaring weakness, if there was, it's suppressing the homer that they need to get better at. That is that is literally yeah. the one. Nets have given up 244, mm -hmm. which is 93 more than they've hit. And they were at 119, plus 119 on the brave side. Crazy. No balls, two strikes. And to the right side, Vargas backed up a bit. Two down. So they're within one of Minnesota's 307 home runs four years ago. They have tied the 19 Yankees with 306 here. Up and away, ball with some cutting action on Chavez Darno. And I still think that they, uh, they kind of set the record in in general based on the fact that that it's not the 2019 ball. Some of it's fishy. Though. I mean, in one year, look what those three teams did. Mm -hmm. Well, it was all over the game, but I mean, yeah, those three teams especially. Yeah, that was the one year the Titleist made the baseballs. Yep. Rutledge gets ahead of Harris and Darno, and they go quickly. But a walk, a hit batter, and Ozuna's 39th tying this one 5 5 after three.
We got a slugfest on our hands. 5-8-0 Nets. 5-3-0 Braves. Their guy has 56 pitches after three innings. Jackson Rutledge just got up to 63 with a very long fourth or third inning. So here in the fourth, C.J. Abrams is going to be a leadoff man for the third consecutive time. Hit it hard last time. Olsen took a double away from him and maybe more. Breaking ball rolling and a three hopper to Ozzy Albies. Lane Thomas is two for two and he's next. Dylan Todd from Elk Grove Illinois Braves a third rounder. From Southeast Missouri State. It's in Cape Girardeau Missouri down near the boot heel. The old Southwest Missouri State now known as Missouri State. Better known for baseball with Ryan Howard Ross Detweiler Drew Millis. Jake Berger now Jake Berger you're right. Yep. How about the Marlins getting him and writing him into the playoffs with 22 home runs combined between him and Josh Bell and uh, no uh, reason for the White Sox to have traded him anyways. Well their guys couldn't believe it when we yep. talked to them. And by the way congratulations to Kim Ng of the Miami Marlins the female executive. Directs their baseball operations the only female in baseball history to do that. And she is in the playoffs with the Marlins. Well done Kim. This one shallow center. It's a race. Harris wins it. What did he cover some ground after playing deep. Become a 2024 Nats Plus member reward your attitude with guaranteed access to opening day 2024 as well as savings on concessions and merchandise. Visit Nats.com slash 2024 for more info. You know as everyone was converging right there Bob I think there is one person that was really feeling uneasy about that right there. Well maybe multiple but Brian Snicker <laughs> as they were all converging. Yes. Nobody wants anybody to get hurt at the end of the season. Joy Manessis one for two with a double. Slammed one off the left field wall first time. I believe the Braves this year, Bob, as well. They're passing the. Unless we get this home run barrage going our way. The 1927 Yankees for home run differential. Which yeah. was 116, 117. We're at 119. So hopefully that we can eliminate that one. Couple homers here. Yeah, yeah. Well. And there there will always be arguments about comparing one team from one era to teams from a different era. Well, Back they, then the baseball yeah. was heavier it wasn't as lively but. Only 42 say, home runs given up by that 27 Yankee team. Yeah I would say in the late 20s. Each pitching staff didn't have 12 or 13 guys throwing 95 either. No and they didn't even have 12 guys throw they had 10. Yeah starters would pitch. Complete games almost every time out. It was a different game, so it's really impossible to make those kind of comparisons. We'll see more was considered their closer that year, and he made 12 starts, and he pitched 213 innings. <laughs> so yeah, wow. You know, and then later times came the Gossages, Roboskis. The other guys closers who used to pitch three or four innings. Fourth inning of National Baseball is brought to you by your Washington area Toyota dealers for legendary safety and reliability choose Toyota and let's go places.
in the offseason. Follow the best social media in baseball at, at Nationals on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, and like us on Facebook for all your Washington Nationals news and entertainment. To the bottom of the fourth inning now. Josh Rutledge looking for a quick inning like he had against these guys two innings ago. He got Rosario Arcia and Pilar on six pitches. Eddie Rosario fly ball to right first time. That was pitch number 64. Out of play and a guy who's become a good friend of ours over the last couple of years is in the booth with us Josh Wetzel. Josh is our radio voice at Triple A Rochester. He's been there for 28 years. He's been announcing in the minor leagues for 28 years. Did I say 28 first 20 years 28 overall. And uh, he's been subbing for Dave Jaguar on the weekends when Dave's been doing some of the ESPN radio game so it's so cool to have Josh here with us still a part of the coldest game I ever played with he was there coldest coldest it was in the teens let's hear it Lehigh Valley in Rochester we had to play one game at least and we got snowed out the next night it was 16 degrees <laughs> never been colder in my life first pitch Scott Diamond's pitching through a changeup I go cap I don't throw a ball for seven innings in between innings because my hands hurt so bad wow Two balls, two strikes place. to Rosario. Swing and a miss. Rutledge, a fastball. Two consecutive swinging Ks, and that's his fourth of the game. We like to see that we're seeing the 97 still here in the fourth inning. Not just having that initial adrenaline rush that we saw in the first inning. It's good to see. Garcia ground ball to short first time. Let's see how eager he is to be swinging the bat here. We mentioned he's gone about four or five games without a hit. Don't want to put the reverse jinx on here, but he is over his last 15. I mean, and they, no they need him to gear it jinx. up a little bit. People that believe that. I know, man. They they blame football announcers for interceptions and missed field goals this time of the year. Yeah, come on. The no hitters that are lost because we said no hitter. You know what? If we had that kind of power, we'd be billionaires yeah. and we'd be on our own island right now. One ball and two strikes. Six nothing Houston at Arizona. Is that what we're seeing? Yep. Oh. Texas still losing right now, one nothing in that. And theirs is also on a run. Run thing, I think. Well. They had a big. They celebrated big after their win last night. They didn't go big, big. I was just uh, big. Yeah, CJ okay. told me. There's big and big, big. Huh? Yeah, Mr. Nikowski had told me that that one of their broadcasters that they did not go crazy. That's good because you got to play but game. They the next appreciated day. it. And Houston, they went business as usual. Celebrate tonight. Hopefully for a, you know, division title and a buy. Arcia, the foul out to Manessis, top of the order. Kevin Pilar again. He gashed it last time. It was right at Carter Kibu. And now, as we play in the fourth inning, as we get to 428 local time here, shadows are creeping from the right side on the infield. I mean, this thing is straight up. Who's going to take charge? It's the shortstop. Abrams plays quarterback and takes that one. And against the same three hitters, Jackson Rutledge has another quick inning.
Watch games live and receive expert analysis and player stats all in the palm of your hand. Don't miss a pitch. Download yours today. On to the top of the fifth, and the Nats don't want to get into another one of these mid-game lulls. Need some runs. Here's what's happening with implications, most notably Texas trailing at Seattle. It's getting late there, and the Astros all over the Diamondbacks. So if Houston wins, they both go to 90 and 72, and the Astros win the West because of the yep. tiebreaker. Yep. Houston, by the way, they're not backing in. They've won three in a row already. Well, <laughs> they shot themselves in the foot the last couple of weeks, losing, what was it, ended up being seven of ten versus the Kansas City Royals and Oakland A's. Both teams Is over 100 amazing? losses. That got their attention, evidently. <laughs> they've been a lot better this week against higher competition. Yeah, and they've really, really been battered at home. Like to the point where they they actually painted a sign in right center field a little slightly off because the players said they complained about not being able to see. Hmm. They didn't really change much. 20 over 500 on the road and under 500 are the Astros. In their ballpark which is hard to believe because that place is so small and so loud. It's like the Cameron Indoor Stadium of baseball. Everything's right on top of you. Change up away. K Bear's had a great day. Ground rule double down the left field line. Acoustics there are great. Sound travels. It does. Let you know what things are coming. Base hit to the left of Arcia. And K Bear sitting on 67. Runs batted in here. That ball is well hit out to center. It's going to back up Harris a bit. That's seven straight for Dylan Dodd since the Vargas leadoff double way back in the third. And only one ball on the ground after that. That was a CJ Abrams ground out last inning. Getting underneath it, just missing. Taking good swings on good pitches. It's just. A couple of ground balls for Carter Keyboom, short and third. Carter in the series one for ten. Well struck. And on two hops out to Rosario to get the Nats that lead run aboard here in the fifth. That's got to feel good right there for Carter. Get up and down nice no movement. Drop the head on it. Really good finish here for the. Uh, for Carter. Yildemaro Vargas two for three this weekend. And he's now hit safely in 13 of his last 17 games. Some of those starts, some not. And that puts the batting average over that time right up around 320. He's all smiles all the time anyway. But uh, congratulating him on his contract for next year the other day I mean just ear to ear he is so happy to be a part of this and what's happening with this organization and as you've mentioned for any guy you want to have around when you got a lot of kids playing he can show them the way to do a lot of things well he's not afraid he's not afraid to step up and tell you when you're doing something wrong you need those guys whether it, people want to be like oh why you bring that up because there is still growth happening there's experience and you need someone in there that's not shy from being able to tell the truth. Didn't have the greatest start to the season. Dove for a ball in Colorado. When the Nats went down to Anaheim a couple of days later, went on the IL April 11th. And they missed him. And this one's got some distance out to right center. Pilar into the shadows. Edge of the track. Nats have dialed some long distance today, but not able to get one out of here just yet. You no, know, his IL stint too, Bob is 
really one of the very few they truly had on the season. Yeah, especially on the position player side. You, know, you have Victor Robles, but it's not like the constant back and forth from the IL for, uh, you know, do you see year in, year out? Yep. Relatively healthy. Yeah, and you hope call. that's a thing that continues to go forward because that's what you need. The franchise wants to continue going in the right direction always. Injury is a part of that, right? Like being able to sustain injury, keep you off, off the IL. Now let's call out ahead of one. This one flirting with the left field line all the way down there. And just over the screen. By the way, our buddy Matthew Kaminsky just played the Jeopardy theme for Alex as he stepped in. Now he's got Ghostbusters going. Who are you going to call? Is there a trifecta in there? I don't know. <laughs> he's probably got another one for another yeah. foul ball. I mean, he's already done call me maybe to Alex. 0-2. Contact needed. Call a check swing and he's out. Back pick at third but at first but the inning was over anyway. And now that's nine of the last ten for the resurgent Dylan Dodd. Series. Not as lopsided as it was a year ago. Especially in that home run call last year between them and the Phillies. Well, I think it was closer to 80, 60, 66 homers, I think it was combined. Yeah, to a certain extent, the Nats have held their own with some of the better teams in the division. They could take a giant step towards 75 or 80 wins next year by just playing better against Miami. For some reason, have totally dominated the Nets, winning all those one-run games like they do. They are a playoff team. Yes, they are. Ozzy Albies pair of walks and thus two runs scored today. It's funny, Ozzy doesn't walk that much, but in this series, three times. So this is the troublesome part of the lineup for Rutledge. He gets some third time around here. Really good on the off-speed to make it one-two. Atlanta's different than most ballparks. Home plate to center field faces southeast. So the sun field here is left field. As compared to most ballparks, it faces the other way and it's right field. So the shadows crossing from right to left, and Ozzy Albies continues his perfect day. He also has five hits in this series to go with the three walks. Well, the guy can hit. Shadows or not. Now it's Riley. 
who has doubled in two trips. That was his 72nd extra base hit. The Braves have three of the top five extra base hit guys in the National League. Freddie Freeman has 90 extra base hits going into the Dodgers finale today. Mookie Betts is in that group with 80. And right behind Riley, Christian Walker of Arizona and Pete Alonso. And the 0 2, and Bradley gets plenty of it. Albies makes the turn, and with a play right in front of him, Alex Cole will force him back into second. But I like the thought process by Alex Cole on this. He was going to come up throwing to second base. So the bullpen's going to get busy this third time around the order, and that's Jose A. Ferrer. Wonder the Freddie Freeman still in the game over in San Francisco right now. He's still he's over two today. Just wonder if he gets that. Elusive. 60th. Double. That'd be an amazing. Thing one of six guys to do it and well. All the other ones are. Black and white photos. <laughs> Nicky Lopez hit by a pitch last time up when Rutledge had him behind in the count. That was a tough break because then Ozuna lost one to right center. And this game was tied. Keep him on the grass third base side. Well hit to right Lane Thomas back. He's got it. Runner at second tags. Riley back to first. Great jump by Lane Thomas for the first out. Yeah, fastball down and in that's going to have backspin on it and he makes the right angle from the beginning which is a drop step over the right shoulder. Makes this look easy as he goes back. Here's Ozuna again. Just good base running. No outs. Go up and tag. All bees to third. I mean, he's. Like, this is crazy to think. Like, he has the chance to get to 100 RBI. I think going into the series, you're going, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Would be the fourth Brave to get there. 100 RBI sitting 90 feet away. And even less with the way Albies is coming down the line, but right handed batter, got to be careful over there, as Franny mentioned earlier. So they're two, three, and four guys. They've been on base seven times in nine plate appearances. And then Ozuna, two for two, getting on right behind them. So so in these situations. Yeah, it's just, again that's there's your free RBI. There's your hundred RBI already right there. Sure. Was to knock him in right here. Don't give him four guys with 100, like you said, matching the Dodgers of this year. The last time it was done was the 21 Blue Jays. 
Shallow. No RBI in this one. CJ puts it away, two down. Rutledge got inside on the hands of Ozuna. And now he deals with Harris. Really like what I see from Jackson just as far as coming back, finding a way to get back into the counts, not giving in, not letting those moments snowball on him. And with the lefty ready, David Martinez stays with Rutledge against a left handed batter, trying to get him through five here. And a pop fly to left. Tracking it. Alex Call, a ways to go, fighting the sun. He's got it. And Davey made the right call as Jackson Rutledge finishes strong after the two hits, retiring three in a row. Jeff King's due up. So when we come back, we'll have a look at the over under, the total runs, live odds. Millish, Young, and Abrams. DraftKings Sportsbook makes it easy to bet. Download the app and get your bets in now. Braves top six coming live odds for the over under total came in at ten and a half up to fourteen and a half download the DraftKings Sportsbook app new customers can bet five bucks get two hundred in bonus bets instantly use promo code diamond when you sign up Millis Young Abrams this one out to short from Drew Millis Orlando Arcia no problem and now that's ten of the last eleven for Dodd. Nats box quiet since the second inning. Everybody getting in on the act. First four guys hit safely in the first, and then Thomas and Ruiz did the same in the second to add that fifth run. Braves getting a couple in the bottom of the first was big for them. But it's the last day of the season. It's the sixth inning, and you're tied with the mighty Braves. You probably would have taken that a couple of hours ago. I would have taken a 19 to nothing game <laughs> above the Braves. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Jacob Young, two fly balls to right. There was a time, I don't know, maybe as recently as a week ago and before that, when we didn't see him hitting the ball to right field much at all. But he's staying on it now and has hit a couple with authority that way. Well, I think more importantly, he's trusting himself in these situations because that, that's more trust. If you're, you're seeing a guy go out there, a young guy pulled, especially not a power guy, it's because you're trying to cheat that fastball and, and you don't believe that you're going to get to it, but you can. See, there's another great swing to right. Uh, Pilar's going to run over there and grab it. They don't lose much defensively with him replacing Acuna. Well struck. 
And a good play, two outs. Yeah, it's a great play right there by Kevin Blarb. Great swing. Turn it back door on that slider. Nice job by Jacob. Been way more fun just to watch him run, though. Top of the order, C.J. Abrams. One for three, a single, a steal, and a run in the first. 46 stolen bases now. So he's probably got, if this is a regulation nine inning game, this AB and maybe one more to get aboard and try to break Trey's record. Ooh, front door in the breaking ball. It was hanging a bit. Well, uh, be honest with you, in the six innings to have four at bats or four plate appearances, you're giving yourself a chance. That time he got a fastball. So mid 80s on the pitch count for Dodd. Jackson Rutledge is at 92 through his five innings. Give him some credit though. Zero on the board, third time around the order. Well, that's a great take. He wanted to start those hands and he yeah. held it back. I think that's the next step for CJ. In his growth, being able to handle lefties well. Off the side of the mound, an extra hop to get to Arcia, and that's close and out. And the Nats go quickly in the top of the sixth. Dodd on a big time roll. Here we go, 5 5. $50 to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health for every Nationals pitcher's strikeout. Thanks, Toyota, for your wonderful support of the Nats, Masson, and our community and our kids over the years. Appreciate it. 5 5 ball game. Jackson Rutledge done for the day after 92 pitches and in five innings. And our Jiffy Lube pitching change will be Corey Abbott. The winning team at Jiffy Lube keeps you moving forward from oil changes to tire rotation, wipers, filters, and more. Yeah, for Corey, his 22nd game on the season, 6 4 5. Forcing fastball and a curveball that we've been seeing of late. Pitching well against the Braves. Sixteen pitch scoreless inning last night. The Nats have just been unable to put an Atlanta starter onto the ropes and put him away these last couple of yep. games. Early leads. Now it's up to the bullpen to keep them at bay the rest of the day. And I would say that was kind of a common theme throughout the year. I think did you score 100 runs in the first inning as a, a team. That's that's awesome. Lane Thomas 
makes the call and Abbott retires Darno. Braves box. Walk. Riley double. Olsen two run single in the first and the big blow of the game the Ozuna three run homer after the Braves were given two free runners with a walk and a hit batter. Eddie Rosario. Two for six career against Corey Abbott. Fly ball to right in the strikeout today. Right side and two is right Vargas. So smooth. Two outs. Bo Josiah Gray for the 2023 Roberto Clemente Award presented by Capital One. Recognizing players who best represent the game through positive contributions on and off the field. Vote today at MLBtogether.com slash Clemente21. Or just do the QR code. That's way easier. Orlando Arcia, two balls on the infield. Taking advantage of an aggressive hitter with a good first pitch breaking ball. So Franny the shadows are beyond the mound. But the uh, batter's eye out there kind of all lit up. What's the challenge for hitters in this situation. Everything. I mean it's just again it's look at the, the contrast that you have right there. It's crazy. Just trying to pick up spin is ultimate. And when you have you know, certain guys are just comfortable in any situation like that. I, I did not like the shadows. It's a strike anyways. That's a swing. This inning's over. Arcia 0 for his last 17. We're going top seven. Lane Thomas has scored his 100 and 101st runs of the day. He'll get things going with Manessis and Ruiz to follow. Back in the first inning, a little cutter up top, and Joey Manessis just shy of a homer. It's a double, and then well, that's burying your head and getting a ground rule double on another cutter in for Kabert. It's your journey on every mile on a brand new Hyundai. Here's our game summary Louise, two for three with a double, three RBI on the day. And Jackson Rutledge, fantastic in 92 pitches, not letting it get away from him. Five innings, five hits, five earned runs, but that's fine with me. Accomplish another outing against back to back against the Braves. Corey Abbott, a great job of getting his boys back in the dugout. Ninth pitch, sixth inning. And when these two met two games ago, and it was leading off the seventh, Jesse Chavez gave up something large to Lane Thomas. The farthest home run of his career, 440. And it was the first career hit he had ever had in 10 at bats against this guy.
That one was hanging and Lane Thomas waited for it. He's three for four. What a good day for him and the only time he was retired was last time with that long running catch by Michael Harris. I was wondering if Davey would let him. Well. He's going to make a play. Here's Joey. One for three RBI double. Off the pitcher who knocks it down. Never even thought about second base. Surprised that he didn't. Right there, you see him point right there at the palm. Yeah, good decision. He would never. I saw close. a stat I think yesterday, Franny, that Lane Thomas is rated as one of the top like 13 to 15 base runners mm -hmm. in the National League this year. Yep. A lot of things go into that. The steals, the steals, and the percentage. Yeah. The taking extra bases, being able to score for first. Is a plus. Outs on the bases, there's not a lot of that from him. And K. Bear Ruiz strokes one well out to left center. Harris after it. Thomas is going to head for third. He's there in plenty of time, and there's one of those things that go into that number four, Lane Thomas. Two outs, it's up to Carter Keyboom, and it looks like the Nats are going to hit for him. As Luis Garcia goes lefty and walks to the plate against the right hander. Carter gets an end on a good knock, too. Yes, he does. Three. And Luis had a nice weekend, three for nine with an RBI. And Garcia. 15 for 35 over his last nine games as we get to the end here. It'll just be with the uh, last nine games that you see right there 429 average the on base at 459 the OPS 1117 which is fantastic. Again, the thing with me with him is what does he do in the offseason to get better? 3 0. Continue this on. Yeah. Then he walks on four. Garcia doesn't walk very much. And it'll be first and third with two outs and little more Vargas coming back up. Twelve walks on the season. Jesse Travis right around league average though with the walk percentage eight percent. Franny something uh, you said a moment ago go caught the attention of your broadcast partner and your producer about the offseason. And that's on the edge. What are the things you can do to make yourself better when you've got all that free time to yourself? Well, it, taking what you've learned through this situation, number one, which is routine, having a routine, keeping that routine going, working on your foot speed. I think it's not about. Now we got a runner safe at second, and we have a runner out at home. Luis Garcia took off. Trying to draw the throw home, and they got Lane Thomas. Nats are having a look. Didn't look like there would be much debate about this one. No, I thought they had him at second base. They tried to take it on Lane, and they, well, they delivered.
there are quite a few reasons to be optimistic about baseball in Washington and Madison will relive all of it with a one hour special join us October 6th at 8 p.m. for the special natitude as we look back at the moments celebrations and heroics from the 2023 season. High five is the scores we had in the bottom of the seventh inning and Travis Darno with a great play right there on the pick and tag on this double steal. Now you get kind of a little bit flat footed from Lane on that. That's about the only thing. But a great play on the back side of this as Orlando Garcia decided that he was going to go home. Because if you, <laughs> you didn't see Luis Garcia in that situation right there, look at that tag just barely out. Yeah, that was a great pickup by Dardo. You could just kind of picture that ball trickling away, and he picked it cleanly. So the way we score that is caught stealing 2-6-2. Two, two. No steal for Garcia on the front end of that. And the Nats will have a couple of defensive changes here as we go bottom seven. Another inning for Corey Abbott. He got the 7-8-9 guys. On nine pitches, seven strikes. Like what we've seen so far from him, attacking the zone. Just gotta attack the zone. That's what we gotta do. Hildemar Vargas, who can play anywhere, shuffles over to third with Garcia going to second. Hildy probably uh, getting some defensive tips from Ron, Ron Washington there, as if he needs any. And Corey Abbott continues to pitch well lately. Top of the order, it's Pilar, Albies, and Riley. Kevin Pilar 0 for 2 since replacing Acuna after one at bat today. Raised with another big crowd, 40,697 here. They're going to end up drawing right around 3.2 million. Yeah. That's a swing. So they're going to end up averaging right around 40,000 a game. That's impressive. Well, you would hope the team that has <laughs> the most wins in the game right now would. And they, yeah, and they don't exactly play boring baseball yeah. either, do they? Yeah. I mean, you come and, here, you're going to see something. And the other part is those guys, they have locked up long term. Make it easy to get behind them. Yeah. Right to Garcia. Come into the game, the ball will find you. Yeah, if you're an, a Braves fan and you buy a jersey, it's going to be good for a while. Yeah, you hope and you think. Yep. I feel like Kevin Pillar, oh, he popped up earlier, but I mean, you know, line drive, third two, base, yeah. <laughs> two lasers, two lasers, hit a couple the other day. It's gonna be very interesting as they, you know, move along towards the postseason and who they who they end up drawing. Albies two walks two runs and a base hit. As the Albies is unstoppable. Well, Dan, maybe your turn to look back on the season. What sticks with you? Well, Bob, for me, there was, you know, that stretch in the second half where the Nationals really turned things on. It's kind of easy to forget now, a little bit removed from that. The Nationals overall this year had seven walk-off wins. And I just asked Davey Martinez his favorite moment from the 2023 season, and he pointed to a couple of those walk-offs. The one against Milwaukee, where the Nationals pieced things together in the ninth inning there to come back. The one against the Rockies, where they scored a bunch of runs against Daniel Bard. 
Uh, those moments are ones that stick with a lot of us, I think. Fans, uh, those of us in the broadcast crew, and the manager as well. The way that the Nationals battled back late in ball games, and despite a rough first half of the year, put together a stretch there where they were really competitive late in games and picking off a, a bunch of walk-off wins. Yeah, that was great coming out of the break. September, a different story. Wins harder to come by. The schedule had something to do with that. But it's going to be at least a plus 15 on the win total from last year. And the Nats will try to add another onto that here today. The first walk off win last year came in August, right? Wow, you're right. It was one of those where it, you got down, you had, no, you had no chance. This year, you got down, you still had a chance. And it felt like the fight kept going. Riley career two for four against Corey Abbott. Ozzy Albies hasn't done much running this year. He's 13 for 14. Short lead. But as we mentioned last night, sometimes Ozzy doesn't run a ton because the big RBI guys are right behind him and you don't ever want to run yourself out of an inning. Not with this kind of bat rack waiting. Two balls, two strikes. I also wonder because of last year with the foot injury. Great late break. Corey Abbott, second strikeout. Ditch the slider really and got into this curveball and look at the good break right there. Nice job. That's got to be such a nasty pitch in the shadows. I have no idea. You, you talk about they... picking up spin. How do you do it? Wow. You go to a certain the good guys they just go to a spot I feel like. There's Nicky Lopez who's been hit by a pitch and then robbed of an extra base hit on a really good running catch by Lane Thomas two innings ago. They had two on nobody out when Lane made that play and then Jackson Rutledge popped up his last two hitters and finished strong. That's the back door breaking ball that drops in. And then the fastball misses. It's a good miss though. Not by much. Oof. Seattle Bob in two hours and one minute one nothing. <laughs> yeah you'll see some of those in the last day of the season. Well I mean that that whole thing over Texas it just hmm. the Astros are only nine outs away from clinching another AL West title and getting the whole week off which yeah. they needed. They do. And they've got all that postseason experience. Like them or not, they're back in. I mean, six years in a row. Yeah, and they the don't. LCS. Yeah, they don't just make it to the playoffs. Yeah. They go deep. So the Houston Astros will go to 90 and 72. I like that, granted. The Rangers are 90 and 72. And of course, those teams used to be in different leagues, but not anymore. That has become some kind of rivalry in the Lone Star State. 3 2. Bob, the uh, the A's were a minus 335 this year in run differential. Not that, that arrow was not pointing up. Hmm. They've lost 111 games. Runner on the move, and uh, it's two on two out with Ozuna coming up, who has another chance to get to 100 RBIs. 
It's Corey Abbott's first walk. Ozuna career against Abbott, a solo homer, but just one for six with three strikeouts. Jim Hickey on the way. Just want to say before we get too much later here, we appreciate you, Nats fans, a lot of you on social media today sending your well wishes and your compliments on our broadcast. And we appreciate that very much. I mean, ultimately, this is all for you. We got compliments? Oh, yeah. Whew. You too. <laughs> Shocker. And we appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And better days are ahead. We know it. You know, we talked about this back in, I mean, I got here in 06. Talked about that until the team made it to 500. In, in 11 and then 12, it went on from there. But these times that we are in and have been in for the last couple of years, they make you more fully appreciate the great times. And we cannot wait. You're here. But you want those times now. Well, we're all we're all impatient. We <laughs> I want it all and I want it now. And then how that song goes. Yeah. But you know, being a baseball fan is a lot like being a baseball player. It takes a lot of patience, a lot of discipline to get through the long season and to do things right in this fascinating game. There are other sports where if you're bigger, more athletic and more talented than the other team they pretty much have no chance to beat you baseball's not like that on this everyday thing for six months over 162 for the most part you know sands the Padres and Mets three teams with the highest payrolls in baseball are going home tonight mm -hmm. and I don't think that's a bad thing I think it's great that they spend But it just doesn't mean that that guarantees you a playoff berth. Right. Doesn't guarantee you a title. And some of it depends on the division in which you play. You know, but kudos to the Brewers, smallest market in baseball, the Twins, not much bigger, for getting where they're going. Well, two years in a row, then at least three teams in the postseason. Braves fans are cheering because it's gone to three and two. I'd be booing. I'd want them to pitch to my guy with 99 RBIs. With two outs, the runners would be on the move here. The on deck hitter is Michael Harris, the second here in the seventh. Did that guy? We have a one hander there one hander on a bullet. <coughs> I think he's seen a few fair share of curveballs. And Ozuna who wanted to <laughs> swing in the worst way takes ball four away. He did not want to walk in that no. at bat. So they're loaded for Harris. <laughs> he did not want to walk. Jose A. Ferrer warmed up a couple of innings ago. He'll get the call now against Harris. So Corey Abbott gets the Nats five outs, gets a couple of walks and a base hit. He's responsible for three men aboard in this tie game.
And a ball driven to left center. Souza. He's got it! He's got it! It's a no-hitter for Jordan Zimmerman! Kevin Franzen got to him first from third base. I didn't want to. The most famous last pitch of a season in the history of the Washington Nationals. Jordan Zimmerman with Steven Souza robbing Christian Yelich. We'll never forget it. All right, here's Ferrer and Harris. I waited forever, Bob. <laughs> I did not want to be there, and I'm like, where is Wilson? <laughs> Wilson! Wilson Ramos and Jordan Zimmerman, the only two Nationals on the field at the end of the game who were on the field at the first pitch of the game. Every time I watch that, I still can't believe we got to see that. It was, uh, yeah, that's that's special. Thought that was, I thought that was the omen. All right, this two is happening. Two balls, one strike for Aaron Harris. One for two is the career matchup between this lefty lefty thing, and that's a good fastball. Bottom seven, tie game, three on and a 2 2. Just straight back. Miami just lost their ball game. They'll finish at 84 and 77. Playoff bound. And with Arizona possibly losing. That's still Miami and Philly, I believe. Now. Up the middle, it's well placed. Garcia makes a great play. Oh. And they're going to score two runs on an infield hit slightly onto the outfield grass. It just shows last night the heads up awareness of Ozzy Albies. His ability to throw that ball home. That got Dom Smith there. He goes for the play at second base. And the guy keeps running home. Yep, Ozuna didn't beat it at second by much. If he'd been out there, no runs would have scored. But they get two. And it's 7-5, and here's Darno. I mean, you couldn't stand at home plate and throw the ball to a better spot than the one where Harris just hit that thing. Just totally split the defenders. Those runs charged to Corey Abbott, still responsible for Ozuna at second. Well, 50 percent, 13 of 26 have scored. 27 is still on the bases right now for Jose Ferrer. And the Braves have the lead for the first time today. This ball popped up right side. Manessis over there with Garcia. Luis will take it. Braves get a couple of walks and they turn it into two runs on just two hits.
telecast is presented by authority of the Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Truist Park, Atlanta. Another big crowd. That's trying to win the series, but now they're down by two. And it'll be Vargas who was in the batter's box to face Brad Hand when the Nats tried to pull off that steal of home last inning. For Brad Hand, his 60th game on the year. That is number six times that he's done it now. 2016, 82. <laughs> wow. That's. <laughs> That's a lot. That's I'm sorry. 82 games. Bill tomorrow Vargas and that ball cuts in to get the edge. He's one for three career against the lefty hand. And he breaks that one in. And they used their A bullpen last night. I don't see them going back to back with a lot of guys today. Even though they have the week off, it just. They did their milestone for their guy that they wanted to do. They accomplished it. Yep. And the Braves announced uh, yesterday officially that they're going to play intra squad games with their Triple A Gwinnett Farm Club here. And it'll be open to the public for fans to come in and watch their guys play. 2 2. Gwinnett's about yeah, but they're done. half hour they're done or more weekend. north of here. Yeah. So evidently, some of them are sticking around and they will face their own guys, though. Mm -hmm. As far as pitchers? As far as pitchers. That's the go. only way you could do it. Because you're not going to trust. <laughs> no, you don't want a right. minor league guy unleashing a fastball high and tight on somebody. But, I mean, they don't play till next Saturday. Right. E even when the Nats had to wait till Friday that seemed like a long layoff when they won their division. Yeah three days is that like that. That number that you're looking at going. That's where it starts to make you nervous four days. You're yeah. Going, okay. Yeah you don't turn it off and on like a faucet that's for sure. Because it's not going from. You know zero to. A spring training game pre you know like a regular season game. Nothing on the line like you know after the all-star break this is going zero to a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well it's very risky. And you saw they're like, trying to do the wave here when they're ahead. You saw it with the you know we replayed it earlier in 2019. What that wild card game could it doesn't always it didn't always happen. But what it could ignite. Right and getting that opportunity to get to the you know use that momentum. Vargas to right. I mean, he was swinging at everything in that at bat. It got to three and two. He fouled off two pitches way off the plate. And now Ildemaro has a two for four day here. That's odd. He's smiling. <laughs> Look at him. He's talking to it. He's just like, oh, yeah, this is going to be right there. Baseball is life. Alex Call has a hit and two at bats against Brad Hand. And an infield hit for an RBI today. Well, this is an important at bat right here for Alex. He's in. Work a walk, get a hit, pad that a little bit, but. Fastball away. And if they had put in a righty, right? And they kept in Chavez, they, they bring in a righty, he's yeah. probably not batting, he's got a 200 average. Yeah, they would have hit Jake Alou. Two and oh. Are hitters aware of such numbers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Bob, I was at like 2.15 in the middle of August of 2007, right after Bonds broke the record against the Nats. I went on a streak that was, I'm not, not going to lie, it was pretty, it was a heater. I got to the last day of the season, and right before that, night before, I saw Brian Sabian, our general manager, in the in the lobby. He goes, I just, I want you, if you get to 270, oh. And he was like, just slap me in the face a couple times. I'm like, <laughs> damn, how am I going to do that tomorrow? Homered against the guy that broke my jaw the year before on a hit by pitch. I'm like, there's no chance. I'm at 270 finally. Got all the way up there. That's great. We rallied in the ninth. But I got another AB. This guy struck out and got to 269 on the year. <laughs> yeah, that mattered. But I mean, it was one of those where yeah. you, you're aware of it. Three and one to Alex Call. Brad Hand's going to miss and walk him. Alex will walk for a team leading 53rd time this year. Good for him. <laughs> that right there is earning it. Those are, you know, for teammates, you, that is an important one. You don't yeah. want to have the one. You made the mention, and for him to get the knock today and to work a walk here, good for him. He's a really good young man. Don't you love this? I like it. Davey's still playing for this. Now, some people probably aren't too happy with it, being like, why are you doing this? Relax. Hey, come on. We're trying to win a ball game here. This is about the culture you're trying to set. It you, doesn't. It yeah. doesn't take a day off. You don't play differently right. because of what your record is. Yep. Two balls, no strikes. At times, the Nats have been very scrappy this year. At times, they've won games with homers. But at bats like this, situations like this, this is when they have been at their best this year. Two and zero to Millis. It's going to pull the bat back, and that's fine. It was up in the zone a bit. I will say this: this is the this time where you have that shadow. That's like we, we've talked about strobe light. Yeah. This is the least favorite time for me to bunt. I, I love mean, to bunt. I can yeah. bunt. It, it looks impossible from that camera shot. Oh, what a Drew Millis! That's perfect. That sends Riley to his left, and he moves up two runners on the first out of the eighth inning. That is very well done. And I think that's the one spot that you are hoping for as a hitter that you get the ball closer to, which is near you, inside. You can see it. Nice job keeping the barrel up. I mean, that's perfection. He went to college. His college doesn't really bunt a lot. I know that. Missouri State, no. No, no Bears don't bunt. That was really good by Drew Millis. So, two on, one out. Jacob Young's schedule and Brian Snicker going deeper into his bullpen. Inning. Vargas at third, call at second, good speed after Drew Miller's sacrifice. And Jacob Young will be facing 
the right hander Joe Jimenez who makes his first appearance of this series longtime Tiger from 17 until last year and ball game number 59 for him. Yep 307 ERA he's more velocity than anything he's got the slider change up combo. And if you're scoring that was 5 4 on the middle of sacrifice. He's Jacob rather small. young up there first pitch swinging small guy 6 3 277. Oh man. But he gets out there seven over seven feet of extension. Late breaker and it just missed a great take as it turns out for the Nats rookie young. Oh for three on balls to right field today but he's hit it hard twice. Tried to check. Is he asking if the. Uh, I thought yeah, for no, a the, moment Young was asking if Darno's yeah. mitt hit his bat. Uh, either that or. You know just recently here with the Cubs series Dan Bellino and their entire crew. Missed a foul ball that caused Brian yeah. Snicker to get thrown out. It was one of those you're going. How did you miss this. The mitt did not hit the bat. Excellent replay from our crew here. Up the middle. And with one out, that'll score a run. Jacob Young at 10th, big league RBI. Vargas home, called a third. 7 6 ball game. Love it. Love the fact that he has this. Does this become one of those big, huge at bats for CJ in his career? Hmm. A ball game at stake and a personal stat that could set a record at stake. CJ 0 for 1 against Jimenez. Ooh, fastball might have been generous out there. The call that is. Abrams 1 for 4 today in the series, 3 for 14. CJ has scored runs two of the three times he's been aboard. And he's stolen two bases in two of the three times how about the he's been on. He's at 83 runs scored this year. Isn't that incredible? From where it started to where it is now. Oh yeah. Oh two. Abrams yes. off the pitcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a tie game. <laughs> and we got ourselves a chance. Alex Cole home to score. We are seven up in Atlanta. Yeah, just huge for CJ, no doubt, to get this opportunity, right? Have a chance. Look, I, well, I love the fact that the game's tied, but I just want, I just want to see this record. I do. <laughs> well, he's taking care of the team part of it. Lane Thomas steps in now. Now Lane's got a. He's one for two with a homer against Joe Jimenez. So you think CJ's got to go early here and the Braves are thinking yeah, the same thing. The, the longer it goes into a bat like you you know Lane's not going to give you one. I'm giving you one right here. Everybody knows here it, this is. Everyone knows he's going to go. That was close. He was hopping towards second, oh. and he met his let it go as quickly as he could. Yeah, but we talk about the hand placement. This guy, a lead on it, going to the very, very back part of the base. He's safe. Now he can get a huge lead. Yeah. He can get the biggest lead he could possibly go. One way lead. That's all the way to second base. There he goes. Pitches a strike. It is not in time. Rip the bag out. Rip the bag out. Number 47.
seven, a new Nationals record for C.J. Abrams. Take the bag out, C.J. I am the greatest. He is in scoring position now. What a beautiful thing to watch. I mean, that's earning it. Right, go falling down 0-2, working your way back, tie the game, and then get the stolen base. Great take by Lane Thomas to get the count even. Oh, I just love it that speed is so much a part of baseball again. Thomas a chopper, third base side. Going to be close. He is safe. And a four hit day for Lane Thomas. Well played by Riley. And it took him until game 162 for Lane Thomas to get. Four hit game number one on the season. Three hits, a walk in the inning for the Nats. Joey Manessis, one for four today. And there's another example of Lane Thomas in his base running. It's been a factor here today. Almost stole home last time. Joey, Mr. Runners in scoring position at 364. As he tries to solve Jimenez, 0 for 3 against him. And that first career four hit game for Lane Thomas. How about that? Nats are being scrappy here in the eighth. Joey Manessis out to center. Harris is going to get there. He was playing toward the other gap. And he made up the difference like it was nothing. That's get two, still fighting. 7-7. Seven, seven. Tickets are on sale now. Discover the ballpark of the Palm Beaches, the second home of your Washington Nationals. View the full schedule at Nats.com slash spring. Bottom of the eighth. I was wondering as we went to the top of that inning, do the Nats have another rally or two in them? Well, they sure did. Vargas got it started. Alex Call a key walk, a Miller sacrifice, an RBI grounder, a couple of hits, and now Hunter Harvey. Tries to keep things even here. He gets eight, nine, and one. Bottom eight. This is something I, I wasn't expecting. Get a little Hunter Harvey in our, our world today. 57th game for him, three and four. 19 holds on the season. Four seam fastball at 98 average on his split. Slider curveball. Do back to back curveballs the other day, two. Eddie Rosario.
Fastball up 2 0. So Harvey in that appearance, 31 pitches, 18 strikes, an inning and two thirds. Two hits, two Ks. And he's in the strike zone, two and one. This one to right center. Lane Thomas looking at it. It stays in off the brick wall. Thomas a bullet to second. And that's Eddie Rosario's fourth hit of this series. Yeah, but Rosario just gets the carry. Right center field we've seen has a little bit extra there. All stays up in the zone just enough. Almost perfectly played. Like, had that been Lane maybe one step over, right? I mean, there's no saying that this is where it's going to go. Yeah. That maybe ball. there's a chance because Rosario didn't think anybody was going to catch it. He wasn't running all the way. Yeah, that ball stayed in by a foot, two at the most. Now, up the middle, and the Braves are going to take the lead as Orlando Arcia breaks an 0 for 17 with an RBI hit. I mean, just taking everything out of this swing right here. And a little bit shaded over towards the pole side for CJ. Just off the tip of his glove. H7 Atlanta, nobody out here in the eighth, and Pilar is next. Isn't that crazy how you just, you, you're trying to play to the moment, trying to play to what that guy has shown, and CJ stepping over one. Well, the bottom of the order, 7 8 9 coming into this inning was 0 for 10. And then Rosario and Arcia deliver. Foul tip, strike two. Deep left center. Making the call early. Good communication by Young with call. As Franny often mentions, when Alex calls in the game, the Nets have three center fielders out there. Everybody wants it. And that's fine. Yep. And the right guy got it right there. Ozzie Albies. That's trying to get this guy out. In this series, he has six hits and three walks. So overall, he is six for 13. Driven in a couple. And another ball driven. Left center, Alex Cole calmly to his left. Out in the sunshine, two outs. Harvey throwing strikes, and the Braves on the attack here. Yep. Big building block, part of the building blocks going forward. Him and Kyle Finnegan. In this bullpen, Jordan Weems, what we saw. Because those I don't think that Jordan Weems, he is. Fantastic. He's a he has got some special stuff. Yep, and I'm still not over the exhilaration of seeing Tanner Rainey pitch an inning last night. That is so great. Riley two for four. Outside edge. Perfect location. Austin 0 for 5 career against Harvey with a couple of strikeouts.
Swing and a miss. And unless the Nats make the Braves bat in the bottom of the ninth, Atlanta will fall short of the home run record. With that in mind, Ruiz, Kibum, and Garcia ahead in this one run game. Member reward your attitude with guaranteed access to opening day 2024 as well as savings on concessions and merchandise. Visit Nats.com slash 2024 for more info. Well, here we go. It's a battle right down to the end. And wouldn't you have it any other way? Ruiz, Garcia, Vargas, and the Braves will bring in 33-year-old Michael Tunkin, longtime twin. Didn't pitch in the big leagues from 18 to 22, and he's seeking his second career save, which would also be his second with the Braves. Yeah, for talking on this year, I mean, we saw him in that first series, very beginning of the season. We're like, who is this? Right, long journey that he has had back to the big leagues after 17 to 23, as far as having a big gap in there. 45th game, sinker slider. It's a weird look too. big tall guy six seven shows his back the entire time. Hey Baird, another good day two for four. He's over for two against this right hander. Hey Baird Ruiz a hit away from a 260 season. And there it is right center. Nats fans. Your guys are going to fight right down to the last pitch of this season. Oh, Kaber. A little sinker up. Don't throw me there. Just continues to pound against the Braves. Three knocks today, 17 for 46 this year for Kaber Ruiz versus the Atlanta Braves. What a great way for him to end the season. Michael Chavis will run for him. No. Well, Luis Garcia trying to make this very interesting. I didn't have us Bob as being the last game on the uh, the docket really. This is the only game left in baseball. Yeah, there's one other one. It's an extra innings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fourteen years ago, the Nats were at Turner Field against the Braves last game of the season, and I believe we went 15 that day. There was no leadoff runner, of course, at second base in any of those innings. 3-0. And that's in there. Oh. 
Garcia walked. Pinch hitting last time around. That's close and a good take. And we've got two on, nobody out. We got a two walk game again for Luis Garcia. Crazy. Going into last night's game, he'd walked 25 times all year. He's had a couple of two walk games this week. And now a big spot for Ildemaro Vargas and Rick Kranitz. The Atlanta pitching coach on his way. Now Dom's going to come into the on deck circle for Alex Call. Got to think that we've already seen Drew Millis lay down a bunt. He's going to have a conversation here with Gary DeSarcino. I can see Gary telling him, I could see it. You got one. You got one to do something with it. Elevate to celebrate right here. Vargas two for four. Lays down another perfect bunt for the Nats. It'll move ahead the tying run and the lead run. We've got some stolen bases and some small ball going on. And Dominic Smith will be hitting for call. It's another perfect job. Top of the zone. Way to get on top of it. Ill tomorrow. Bunt, then run. I mean, you know who's thanking Davey right now? I can almost guarantee you. Is Brian Snicker. Sacrifice bunts, bunts that you're going to have to see, you're going to have to do in the postseason. Yeah. They're going to walk Dom Smith. That'll load him up. In a huge spot for Drew Millis. Like it just for the fact that his family's here. Show off in front of him. And Drew laid down a beauty of a sacrifice that led to a couple of runs for the Nats. Last inning walked earlier. They're loaded with nets. Here in the top of the ninth. Taking one to make him throw a strike. It's a good take. That's a rollover pitch. Mm. Nationals have not hit the Braves fourteen to nine. Trail because they've given Atlanta several runs on free passes today. But a big battle right down to the end here. Drew Millis, one and two. A little less of that strobe effect now as the shadows engulf most of the field. And most importantly, the center part of the infield. The entire field for the hitters. Mm. And Millis continues to battle. Yeah, and that was a good swing, too, on that pitch. That was the one you want to be able to drive something. Great take on a ball just up and away. And cheers to Vic Carapaz. He could be over it. Just saying. Close enough on which to be hacking. Looking for a ground ball, is he? With all those sinkers. Oh. 
Chu Millis draws a game tying walk in the top of the ninth inning. And that'll be his sixth big league RBI. Blown save for Tonkin. What a great AP. And the Nats are in business here with Young, great speed, and still only one out. That's the third walk of the inning. I like it too because we get to see Kyle Finnegan now. Jacob Young 0 for 1 against Tonkin. Braves play the infield in, and that almost hit him. RBI grounder last time for Jacob. All the pressure is on Tonkin right now. All of it. And Jacob Young all in. Well, he likes this situation. We've seen it before. Walk off earlier. Base load situation, infield drawn in. So this one put him ahead. Hmm. On the foul tip, it's 2 2. Jacob Young delivers and the rookies are doing it for the Nats at the bottom of the order. It's now 10 to 8. I love it. I love it. They keep fighting and next thing you know Jacob Young showing the emotion over there at first base. Tell me this doesn't matter. Just an absolute rocket. Now we get to watch him run. That's even more fun. CJ can pad his stats on the, uh, the stolen base. He gets on again. Let's go. Yeah, and there's a runner at third with fewer than two outs. So the important thing now for CJ Abrams, who gets his sixth plate appearance today, get that add on run home. And down to second is Young without a play. They're going to give him a stolen base good for them and he's 13 for 13 as a big leaguer. It's a game situation. I like it. One one. One thing that I don't think we talk about enough Drew Millis could run man. For a catcher, he can get down that. He can get over there. He got the third quickly. Ball in the air a long time. Sliding catch. And then popping up is Rosario. And Drew Millis decided not to test him there. That's a great play. Yeah, that is a great play. Surprise he didn't go. Foul ball when caught, but spectacular nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And another shot for Lane Thomas, who has his first career four hit day. So he's never had a five one. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, I would think that's obvious. Front door up and in. He won a number 29. Well, we didn't know if the Nats would even be pitching in the bottom of the ninth, and now they are. Lane Thomas lays off the breaking ball. It turns out perfect outer half. One and two. Front door. 
even at 2 2. Three pitches here for Michael Tonkin. I don't think he had that one planned. Ain't Thomas should get it out of play. Up and away. Great take. It's three and two. Ball's got some topspin on it. One hopper to Riley, and that's it. But the Nats will score three in the top of the ninth with a little help from Michael Tonkin. Hey Nets fans, this is our playoff game. Kyle Finnegan is next. Huge couple of runs to put the Nats on top. Three RBI day for the youngster, by the way. And Cal Finnegan will get Nicky Lopez, Marcelo Zuna, and Michael Harris, the second bottom nine. 67th game for Kyle. He'll finish one shy of his career high at 68, but 27 of 35 on the saves. 7 and 5, 3, 6, 9. Fastball split, slider. Hoping to finish it out on a, a great note. Kyle didn't get a save Friday night because the Nats are up by four, but he got a ninth inning on 13 pitches, nine strikes. And included in that group were Albies and Riley, who just hit to finish the bottom of the eighth. So here's Nicky Lopez. 0 for 1 on the day, hit by a pitch and a walk. That's nice to see. 97 out of the tank. Wow, that was firm. That was shoot right there. Vargas was toast to the grass on the third base side. Now on the 0 1, he backs up. Jake Alou for Alex Call. After Alex was pinch hit for, and there's Jake dealing with that sunfield out there. And the one two. Good swing by Lopez. Ball slicing.
Powell will have 10 appearances in all but June, where he had nine. Pretty awesome. Yep, he Consistent. thrives yep. with lots of work. Looked like he took a little bit off, and it's lined at a loo. Jake looking right at the ball in that Sunfield. Nothing easy out there. One out. Ozuna is next. Remember that look that he gave the last time he was up, second and third, got the walk. He was completely upset. I have a feeling he's trying to go, uh, he's trying to go up top. This is not going to be a team of bat. You think? <laughs> so you start him with the first pitch breaking ball. Right. I want to jam him this time. Now misses to the other side and down. Schwarber have a very like the bat looks so light to them. Right? We, we've mentioned that about Kyle. Yeah. See if that goes with a Zuda, just like it's like a wiffle ball bat. Two balls, two strikes. Ozuna the other way. Did he get it? Wow. Marcelo Zuna on his last swing of the season makes it to 100 RBIs. And 40 home runs. Unbelievable. The elevated four seamer 99. That's his fifth on 95 plus this year. Forty and a hundred and he got two and four of it today. Now it. It's Cal Finnegan against Michael Harris the second by the way Ozuna before that at bat. One for eleven career against Kyle Finnegan. Who drops one down and Harris had no chance. So the Braves homer number 307. They've tied the record. Mm -hmm. This one lined right at Lane Thomas. He's retreating and he can't get it. Ball hits the wall and the tying runs at second. That ball just scalded on this one. 108 off the bat. And we've talked about the carry on this and Lane just off the tip of his glove. Timed it perfect, just did not. Oh. What an effort. Here's Travis Darno, 0 for 4 today. Look out, Eric Young Sr. Ten to nine. We've had 26 hits in this game. 15 by the Nats. Darno career one for eight against Cal Finnegan. That's right in there.
swing and a miss down and away not reachable two outs Good job by Kyle executing a four seamer down in the zone 99 right by him you see so much elevation from Kyle throughout the season when he was going great it was all the quadrants top of the zone fastball bottom of the zone then the split Eddie Rosario two for five career against Finnegan upstairs with the heater and another that just missed. Hard to believe the two game two teams that are 34 games apart can have this much fun on the last day of the season. It has been wild here. Yes it has. This one to left. All right. Jake Alou has it so do the Nats. They win a scintillating last game of the season. Kyle Finnegan gets saved number 28, and it'll be 71 for the Nats in 2023. Who would have had a combined six crooked numbers up in the game today? But this team, this team showed exactly what it's been all year. They fight. Davey continued to push the right buttons today. A couple of sacrifice bunts. We saw it all, and at the end, Kyle Finnegan getting it done. Doesn't matter how many they score as long as you get the save and he did just that what an effort what a season what a year of growth that we saw from these guys and partner it's been fun absolutely enjoyed every minute of it Franny you've been amazing for the last two years appreciate it feeling is mutual and the guys they have a lot to smile about some of them heading home from Atlanta some of them heading home on the charter tonight back to Dulles but what a great way to end the season taking two out of three from the Atlanta Braves season series ends up eight and five Atlanta but in this ballpark three and three and that's something that you can put in your hip pocket for I think so. future reference well you have these young guys that have experienced it here they've had experiences of last year they've had experiences of this year which is you can win here you can't come to this place to do it it's fun to see natural finish 71 and 91 thirty seven and forty four on the road nineteen and thirty three in the division and uh, you know some of us were wondering coming into the weekend could the Matt Nats make it to seventy well now they've made it to seventy one so plus sixteen Nats extra we'll talk about it on the win side from last year CJ Abrams Nats history eighth inning steal number forty seven one pass Trey Turner from six years ago and Lane Thomas a career high four base hits Dan down on the field we're trying to catch our breath up here how does it feel down there well Bob feels pretty good after win no doubt about that and Kyle Finnegan wraps it up for save number 28 Kyle I mean you'd like it to be as going into the playoffs you'd like for the win total to be higher than it was overall but not a bad way in terms of intensity in terms of the end result to end the regular season huh. Yeah, I mean, what a what an incredible atmosphere to end the season here. Um, you know, it felt like what it might feel like in the postseason packed stadium up against a postseason caliber team, and we were with them every step of the way. So uh, I think we have the pieces moving forward, and we've shown that we can play really good baseball. So we got to get to work this offseason and get ready for spring training and, and uh, make some noise next year. Finney, you guys were trailing in game 162 against the team with the best record in Major League Baseball. It's the ninth inning. You know, some guys are probably ready to go home, but were you at all surprised to see your boys battle back, put up that run total in the top of the ninth and give you a chance to close out a win to wrap it all up? No, I mean, that's been our thing all year is we never quit. We're gonna take it down to the last out and we're never out of it. And, you know, just when you think you got us on the ropes, we, we score some runs and we're right back in it. And, uh, you know, it wasn't as, as pretty a game as we'd like, uh, pitching the baseball, but we did what it took to win the game. Finney, you guys end the season with 16 wins of an improvement from last year to this year. As you assess the roster and the way that you guys are progressing, where have you seen the most growth that has allowed the 16-win bump from last year to this year? 
Well, I think that young core that we've acquired is, is really starting to come into their own, and they're starting to you know play with their hair on fire a little bit, and um, comfort in the big leagues is a big thing, and I think we got a lot of guys that are getting comfortable together at the same time, and, and that's how you create that, those special core groups, and I think we're, we're building something special here. Do you individually, do you as a team, now take some of that spark into the offseason, already looking forward to spring training in 2024 and seeing what you guys can do next year? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got the postseason on our minds next year, and, and we're going to do everything that we can to put ourselves in that position, and, and that's our mindset. Benny, heck of a season. Congratulations, and congrats on the save here today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Kyle Finnegan wraps it up for the Nationals. They win a series here in Atlanta to end the 2023 regular season. How about 71 wins on the year? A bump from the 55 last year, and the Nationals will go into the offseason with a good taste in their mouths. We've got Nats Extra Postgame coming up next. Full breakdown of Game 162.